Tom Sean Porter. Please check out Jay Calderon Boxing Talk on YouTube. God bless you. What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Jay Calderon, Stan Clay Entertainment, and we're about to get into this week's boxing talk. We're going to talk about the fights coming up this week, but first we're going to do a recap on the fights that took place over this past weekend. We start off first with Danny Garcia versus Brandon Rios. This was a very good fight. Highly entertaining fight. We knew because of the style matchup that this was going to be an all-out war. And it lived up to the hype because Danny Garcia was boxing. He was doing very well, trying to set some distance by landing that jab and setting up those quick counter punches on Brandon Rios. But Rios was putting on the pressure. He was coming forward, trying to get on the inside where he does his best work. And he was landing that overhand right on Danny Garcia, but to no ill effect was his punching power. Garcia took those shots and he continued to work to the body and also with those beautiful left hooks and straight right hands on Brandon Rios. Rios was pressing the attack as it got into the later rounds. We saw Rios coming on and we saw some holes in Danny's defense because he got caught with some shots that he shouldn't have. He shouldn't have stayed on the ropes. He made some mistakes in this fight that if he was to go up against the top guys like Errol Spence, he would be paying a very heavy price because he allowed Brandon Rios to get off shots that he shouldn't be able to get off. But Danny Garcia kept his composure. He continued to work well, landing those counter punches. But in the ninth round, he landed a perfectly timed shot with a right hand that dropped Brandon Rios, and Rios was badly hurt. He got up, and he was on wobbly legs. The referee made the right call by stopping the fight before he got hurt anymore. You know, Danny Garcia had an impressive win. He looked good in this fight. He did have some ring rust to shake off. He was away for 11 months, but it was a good win. I know a lot of people say that he's a cherry picker for picking a guy like Brandon Rios and also guys like Rob Salka in his past. But Danny Garcia is a young fighter. He's a good fighter. He's been a world champion in two weight classes, and I give him respect. I'm not a big fan of Danny Garcia at all, but I do give him respect, and I think this was a good comeback fight for him to get back into the mix of the welterweight division. He wants to fight the big guys in this division. He's looking for that rematch with Keith Thurman. Now we saw Sean Porter step into the ring and step to Danny Garcia, and that was very entertaining for the boxing fans. I love that Sean Porter did this. It reminded me when Sugar Shea Mosley stepped into the ring against Floyd Mayweather, right after Floyd Mayweather beat Juan Manuel Marquez, and he demanded a fight. He told him, you know, step up to the plate. And that's exactly what happened because a few months later, Shane Mosley and Floyd Mayweather got it on. So let's hope that this altercation, this argument that these guys had in the ring will lead to a fight in the next few months because I would love to see this fight between Danny Garcia and Sean Porter. It's a very tough fight for either man because Danny Garcia has that punching power. He has good boxing skills. He has a very good jab, but the pressure and the relentlessness of a Sean Porter, very strong, physical. This is no Brandon Reels. This guy is going to really take you to the limit. He's going to back you up. He's going to put you on the ropes. He's going to make you uncomfortable for 12 rounds. And if Danny Garcia wants to fight against the top fighters in this division, he's going to have to face guys like Sean Porter to prove a point that he belongs. Now, moving along to another fight in the welterweight division that took place between two former world champions, Devin Alexander versus Victor Ortiz. This was a very good performance by Devin Alexander. He put on a boxing clinic against Victor Ortiz. I got to tell you, I was rooting for Victor Ortiz in this fight because I am a Victor Ortiz fan, but he once again, he disappointed me in this fight. I didn't see Victor Ortiz doing anything in this fight to make me believe that this fight should have ended in a draw or a victory win for Victor Ortiz. I saw Devin Alexander in control, using that jab, boxing very well, slipping punches, showing good defense, showing that toughness, and actually dominating and controlling this fight. You know, he's gone through a lot over the past two years years with drug addiction. He's battled back and now he's in the ring looking superior with his boxing skills and he dominated this fight for mostly all 12 rounds and I scored this fight 10 rounds to 2 for Devin Alexander. I did not see Victor Ortiz winning no more than 2 rounds in this fight and it was a shameful scorecard that was handed in by these judges because they awarded a draw to both of these men, and it's an injustice to a guy like Devin Alexander who has been through so much, and boxing has to change because these judges are just putting another black guy in the sport of boxing when they give these scorecards because this was definitely not a draw. Devin Alexander's hand should have been raised 
after this fight was over and he should be looking at a big fight, perhaps at a guy like Danny Garcia. If Garcia doesn't want to take the Sean Porter fight, Alexandria is there and that's a very great matchup, especially the way he came off this performance. I think he will fight a very tough fight for Danny Garcia and it's a good fight. Another great matchup would be Jesse Vargas versus Devin Alexander. That's a good fight as well. You know, Victor Ortiz, if he fought Danny Garcia right now the way he did in this fight against Devin Alexander, I see him getting knocked out just the way Brandon Rios got knocked out in his fight. So I think Victor Ortiz should just hang up the gloves and retire because mentally he's just not there in the boxing ring. He doesn't look like he has that hunger anymore. And I think that he's going to get badly hurt. Now moving along over to the UK, it was one of the biggest fights of the weekend between WBA super middleweight champion George Groves versus Chris Eubanks Jr. This was a highly anticipated fight. A lot of British fans were excited about this fight. And I got to tell you, George Groves put on a very good boxing display, dominating Chris Eubanks. Eubanks started very slow in this fight. He looked very hesitant in the early rounds. You know, he didn't want to pull the trigger. It looked like he was waiting for one big shot to try to hurt George Groves. But Groves, a veteran fighter, he looked like the bigger man in there in size. He was landing that jab beautifully. He was also tying up Chris Eubanks. Every time Eubanks tried to come on the inside, he showed that veteran move by smothering his punches and not letting Chris Eubanks get off his shots. And he was landing that right hand perfectly, scoring with counter punches and looking very superb in this fight. You know, in the second half of the fight, you started to see George Groves wearing down like he always does. And you saw Chris Eubanks starting to come off and starting to rip off some very good combination shots. But he was way behind going into the later rounds. He suffered a cut early and it looked like it was bothering him throughout the fight. The blood was pouring into his eyes and Groves was taking advantage of that cut, ending that perfect jab on him and setting the tone, keeping a distance, trying to continue to outbox Chris Eubanks in this fight. We saw that George Groves suffered the injury because reports came out that he dislocated his shoulder and that's when you saw Chris Eubanks taking advantage of the situation and he continued to press forward and land some very good big shots and tried to knock this man out in a desperate attempt to try to come back in this fight. But George Groves survived and finished the fight on his feet to get a unanimous 12 round decision over Chris Eubanks, a very good decision by the judges. He advances to the World Boxing Super Series finals and he's gonna go up against the upcoming winner of this weekend's fight Colin Smith versus former two-time world champion from the light heavyweight division that moved down to the super middleweight division Germany's Jürgen Bremer this is a very good matchup because Jürgen Bremer is an experienced two-time world champion I know he's the older of the two but this guy has very good boxing skills he's a southpaw with a good jab he has that good straight left hand and he's going up against a young undefeated hungry fighter in Colin Smith Colin Smith is a very tall fighter he has that good stiff jab and he has good hard-hitting punching power and I'm very intrigued by this matchup because we're gonna see who comes out on top there's some high expectations by the British fans because he was a very good amateur. Now he looks to advance to the finals to face a guy like George Groves for the WBA super middleweight crown and also that Muhammad Ali trophy and to become the 168 pound winner of this tournament in the super middleweight division. But I gotta tell you, this is an evenly matched fight 50-50 fight in my book because you can't count Bremer out. I know that he's older, but he still has something left in the tank. And I believe that he could definitely edge out this fight against the younger fighter because of his skill set. He's a very crafty fighter, very tough fighter as well from Germany. And he also has the experience to win a 12 round fight. Now there's some reports out there that George Groves might not be ready for that date in June for the finals because of the injury that he suffered in this fight. We have to see if they're going to push back the date so that George Groves is healthy and he could continue in this tournament and he could participate in the finals against the winner of this upcoming weekend. Now moving along over to the United States, it's a big fight on HBO with the Superfly 2 card. It's a good solid card, but the main event is the most intriguing of the whole entire night and it's going to be against two-time WBC Superflyweight champion Thailand's Soy Visa versus former unified two-time world champion Juan Francisco Estrada. This is going to be perhaps fight of the year candidate because it's going to be total fireworks when these two little guys get into the ring. Both guys are very good fighters. We saw Soy Visa in 2017, a great year for him. He was a candidate for fighter of the year, knockout of the year, and also upset of the year when he dethroned and beat Nicaragua's 
Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez in a very good fight at Madison Square Garden. Yours truly was there for that fight. It was an all-action war from beginning to end. A very good, entertaining fight with a shocker in the 12th round. It was a controversial decision, but Soybrin Visa upset Chocolatito in that fight and became a world champion once again. Then a few months later, he punctuated with a spectacular knockout in the rematch, taking out Chocolatito and staking his claim as one of the best 115 pounders in the world. Now that you have the king of the division, Inari Inoue, moving up in weight to the bantamweight division to take on England's Jamie McDonald for his WBA title, that leaves a vacant spot at the top of the 115 pound division. And that's where this fight takes place this weekend to fill that void between Estrada and Soivan Visa. Because the winner of this fight will become the top dog in the division. I see this fight as also a 50-50 fight. Soivan Visa is a very strong fighter. Heavy-handed puncher. We saw the punching power that he displayed against Gonzalez. He also fought former world champion Carlos Quadres, who's gonna be fighting on the undercard that evening. And in the fight between Quadres, and Soy Renvisa was a very good fight. Quadres won the title and lifted up the belt from Renvisa. So this guy is an experienced fighter that has been in there with the top guys in the division. He's gonna give Estrada everything that he can handle. Estrada is a seasoned veteran, a very good technician fighter, good body puncher, puts his punches together very well. He has good punching power, but can he bang with the big boys at 115 pounds? So that Chocolatito had a difficult time against the big guys in this division. I see this as a very tough test. I like Estrada. He reminds me of a Juan Manuel Marquez type fighter, the way his style is. But I see this as a very close fight. May the best man win. And let's just hope for a great night of boxing. That's my final fight analysis and my recap over the fights that took place this past weekend. I would like to thank everyone for tuning in to my YouTube channel right here, J. Calderon Boxing Talk. Please subscribe to the channel, hit that little red button, put your email information in so you get all my notifications. Once I drop a new video, hit that like button, that share button, make comments. Also, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram, and join the Facebook boxing group page all under the same name, J. Calderon Boxing Talk. I'm J. Calderon, Stan Clear Entertainment. Thanks for your support. Keep watching and please subscribe.